Well, I've come to Fort McAllister in Georgia to learn about the fort and the history that took place here. So let's go inside the fort and take a look around. Fort McAllister was built in 1861. From July 1st, 1862 to March 3rd, 1863, Fort McAllister was bombarded several times by the United States Navy, but was not defeated. But then on December 13th, 1864, General Sherman sent 4,000 men against the 230 Confederate defenders. Fort McAllister was defeated and taken over by the Union Army. The Union Army then removed all the guns and ammunition from the fort. This is a reproduction of the barracks that would have stood here. Now you can't go in these reproduced barracks and this would have only been for the officers that would have lived here at the fort. Uh, Non-commissioned officers lived in little huts and we'll go look at those next. Now these huts here would have been the quarters of the non-commissioned officers staying at the forts. Your sergeants and corporals would have lived in little huts like these. Not a lot of room. They do have a nice stove. Now a Confederate non-commissioned officer living in here, probably a sergeant or a corporal, three to a room, it would have been hot in the summertime because these things only have two little windows and there are no windows in the back so you don't get a cross breeze. In the wintertime you do have a little stove here to keep the place warm. They have a blacksmith demonstration area here too. Here is the outside of Fort McAllister as we're about to go in. Now going over the bridge into the fort you can see the protected moat area. This is a dry moat here, it looks like. And now we enter the fort. And they have kind of a guided tour here and a path they want you to stay on. So we enter the fort and you can see the parade ground the cannon up there, the inside of the fort. There's the bomb proof. Here we see one of the cannon of the fort. You can see they can fire over this wall and they have a excellent view of the river here. You can see a room underground right next to the cannon so they can bring ammunition right out to the gun. This is one of the passageways into the walls of the fort. Don't know exactly purpose of these things. That passageway I just went down to led to the back of the shot furnace. But it was hot in there. A shot furnace is where you would heat up cannonballs so they would catch ships on fire. All right, this is the main bomb proof. This is where the men could go inside it was used as a hospital and the officers would come in here and sleep.
there are beds. And this thing is deep. This is a huge thing where men could come sleep. It would also probably be cooler in here because it's under the ground. Probably here at the end is where the officers would be. Now we turn back and there's a fireplace here. Here's one of the magazines for the fort, the side of a hill. From here you get a really good view of the water and you can see the turn in the river. Major John B. Galley was killed here during the attack when a 32 pound shell hit this position. Now here's where the gun would have been placed to fire out across the river there. Because you've got a great view down the river. All those trees would not have been there. They would have had an unobstructed view down the river. Now when the end of the war, General Sherman was directly across the river from here. He was watching from the roof of a rice mill two and a half miles away as they attacked the fort. Now the largest naval guns ever to fire at a fort were fired here in 1863 when 15 inch shells penetrated 17 feet of sand digging craters. That's pretty amazing. They would have been firing from down the river. And as we walk along these gun emplacements, the Confederates had put obstructions in the river by putting pilings down so ships couldn't get through. And then these guns could have pounded the ship. Here's one of the guns that would have been pounding the ships that came down the river. And over here, the position of the monitor was off in that direction. That's pretty amazing. Now we keep walking along these gun positions. And you can see next to each gun is a magazine inside a mound to protect the shells that are in the magazine. Now we're coming up to another large gun that's been elevated. That's pretty amazing. This gun could be rotated. Let's turn around and get a good view of the gun. Now that's a big gun. I would not want that firing at me. This is the back side of the bomb proof. And there's the path around it to all the gun positions that face the water. And you can see the big Columbine gun we just passed up there. And then another gun position there. And then we have some more bomb proofs or ammunition bunkers. I'm not sure what right there. And then we have a path around 
another part of the fort. This would have been the gun emplacement closest to the enemy. And this is the one that Major Gully commanded himself. It was an eight inch Columbine. Well, here are some powder magazines back here on this back side of the fort. Here's another powder magazine. And now let's go back up. Oh, now this powder magazine, you can go inside. So let's go inside and see what we see. Everything is underground so that it's hard for anyone to get a shell down here. Fuse boxes and then barrels of ammunition, gunpowder. Now let's walk up to this position here on the fort. And when we go up these steps, the battlefield where the battle took place in 1864 to take the fort was right outside this area. Now it's all woods. Now we're going to walk to the Sally Port. Now the Sally Port would have been the main entrance to the fort. This is where they could bring in wagons and supplies into the fort through this area right here. This would have been an open space like this in 1864. And you can see the moat right here on both sides of the Sally Port entrance. Now I'm sure in 1864, they would have a gate or something protecting that entrance. Now walking further out the Sally Port, There's an arrow that directs us to the battlefield where they took the fort. Here is the 10 inch mortar position. Now a mortar is a gun that will fire with a high arc. Now we're walking on the other side of the defensive wall that leads from the main fort to the mortar position. This is the area where the Union soldiers advanced along the beach, probably a little further from this wall so they wouldn't get shot. But of course, we can't walk through those woods. It's just too thick. Now I'm on the path. It's at the end of the tour. It runs along the outside of the fort. This is the view that the Union Army would have had attacking this fort in 1864. This is the view the Union Army would have seen attacking this fort. I wouldn't want to do that. This is the front of the fort that faces the water and you can barely see the guns peeking over the top as this area faces downriver. Path around the outside of the fort, right down by the river. Fort McAllister State Park also has a very nice museum 
at the Visitor Center. This museum covers the history of Fort McAllister. I hope you've enjoyed the visit to Fort McAllister State Park in Georgia. So until next time, see ya.